please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Nikkei, that one is up about four tenths of a percent, outperforming in an otherwise weakish looking Asian screen. With FIS continuing to create shots on all rallies, uh, uh, and the fact that the rally has been driven by mid-caps. Uh, mid-cap driven rallies normally don't sustain in a downtrend. Uh, 10 up on the Nifty. No, it's going into flat today. Now, Nifty is starting flat uh, and Sensex is up just about 20 now. We are staying with uh, 8 to 10 percent growth uh, forecast and that's kind of the range. The MHRA inspection for Goa and the Health Canada certification for indoor uh, both were indeed uh, in, you know, in line with what we really expected. It's going to be a very weak listing for ICICI Securities, 15% knockdown. Uh, at 439 or 440, it would still be trading at about 22 times forward FY19. For the Indian tractor market scenario, we are contributing around 50 to 55%. Uh, in the Indian tractor market. The luxury market, of course, uh, JLR numbers have looked very good. After many, many months, we've seen a pickup over there, both month on month and year on year. We are at the day's lowest point, 10,150 is where the Nifty is at, and the lowest about 10,161. Okay, sharp decline for the market, uh, not entirely unexpectedly, but perhaps the quantum of fall would surprise some people. Uh, 100 points down now on the Nifty from the high point, of course, down quite a bit. And the bank nifty once again leading the downtick. This is closing well. I'm Anuj with me. Is Sonia. Hi, Sonia. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. I thought you were going to start by saying I told you so <laughs> because that's what you told me early in the morning, right? No, I mean, see, Sonia, the point is counter trend moves when they're led by high beta names normally don't sustain. Yeah. Uh, triggers normally come. And, you know, we have post facto analysis is always, uh, you know, easy. You can say that, you know, look, this happened, that happened. But the fact is that uh, this is a market which. Uh, Perhaps is you know, going through a bit of pain. Exactly, it's going through a bit of a pain. This is still a bull market correction. Globally, the volatility is back. And today, what you have with China also retaliating, now you don't know what Donald Trump is going to do, right? Yeah. Uh, that's still a big if. Dow futures already down about 400 points. Tomorrow is weekly options expiry policy as well. So ahead of that, uh, th this is a market which is actually a, on the cusp. Uh, sometimes, you know, all you need is just one bit of minor positive news and you could see a lot of short covering. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the, you know, how do you trade in a market like this? Perhaps you don't or, you know, if you, you know, you, you know, stay very nimble mm -hmm. and uh, trade it. But the fact that global volatility has returned is telling you that uh, there's some problem for this market. Uh, the key would be, is the counter trend move now entirely over? Mm -hmm. uh, the move that we had from 1950 to 10,250. And 10,250 in the past has been a big resistance mark for the market. Yeah. So I think today's high now becomes sacrosanct. Today's high will now become a major resistance, according to me. We still have one last hour to negotiate though. Yeah. And there things could get really interesting. So let's watch out for that. Uh, 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 Bank Nifty is leading the weakness once again, mm -hmm. and that should not surprise many because that's become a bit, bit of a weak index now. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think not only us, I think even Donald Trump doesn't know what Donald Trump is going to do <laughs> next, you know. So that's the kind of uh, surprise yeah. element you're dealing with. But Ashwini was making a point a, a couple of days back, Anuj, that yeah. uh, this year so far has been so different from last year in the sense every week is different. Mm. So you can't really extrapolate the trend. Mm. I, I, is that going to make it very tough to trade? Yeah, I think this year is going to, you know, this that's, that's been the point that we've been making that this year is going to be so much different compared to last year and this year is going to you know also f you know last year a lot of funds did well a lot of you know portfolios did well uh, you know in a in a year when the mid cap index goes up 48 percent you will have that uh, mm. this year i think is going to be tough I, I, it's not that the, you, you don't have individual stocks which are making new highs today also you have so many stocks which have actually made new highs so the individual stocks level, I think the market is still doing fine. At index level, I think there's some problem right now. Okay, well, let's take you through the last one hour of trade. It has been very, very tricky through the course of the day. But in case you missed out on all the action, here it is. Uh, sharp fall on the Lal Street in the last one hour. Key indices slipped to the day's lows, down 1% apiece after China reciprocates with tariffs on over 106 products to the U.S. Global markets tumble as trade wars, uh, trade war fears resurface. China plans a reciprocal tax, as we said, on the U.S. goods worth $50 billion. Plans to impose 25% tax on U.S. soybean, chemicals and U.S. vehicles. Dow futures are down 400 points as we speak. But in our own market, Stata Motors sustains its gains in an otherwise dull market. Jaguar Land Rover sales in North America see a good pickup in March after disappointing for the last few months. 
Okay, how should you position yourself in this last hour of trade? Then Ashwini Gujarat and Mitesh Thakur now join us with closing strategies. Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, Ashwini. Your thoughts first on uh, you know whether the damage for the day has been done, or do you think in the last hour there could be some more weakness? And uh, how would you approach the market from here on? See, I've been saying that the rally that we had was extremely choppy and did not look like the real thing. So now we have the real thing. Now, you know, this is that sort of news that, you know, Donald Trump has Chinese food in the evening. So, you know, my a bit, you know, you'll have all kinds of rumors because earlier also we heard negotiations have started. So it's kind of kind of going to be very newsy. But overall, uh, the way, you know, this trade war is now escalating, that's always bad for markets. There's no question about it. 10,150 was the 50 percent zone of the rally from 99.50 till about 10,350. So by breaking 10,150 and remaining below that, uh, I think that rally can be safely uh, called over. Uh, we should carry short positions from here on Nifty, Bank Nifty. If you've not taken, even right now is a good time because the great momentum with which the downside has happened, unless, you know, the news is turned on its head uh, on a 180 degree angle. I don't think there will be too many large bounce backs. So my sense is the last hour uh, could still have more downside. So I don't think there'll be great amounts of recovery here. As far as individual stocks are concerned, Hexaware is a sell with a stop of 304 target of uh, 286. JSPL is a sell with a stop of 228 target of 213. And Repco Home is a buy with a stop of 598, target of 620. So, uh, Ashwin, you're saying that even for last hour, shots can be taken because we are pretty close to the low point of the day. Well, chances are people are long going into today. So that way, you know, the long positions need to be cut. And, you know, often people are sitting on hefty losses when there is sudden news-based declines. So my sense is the residual weak longs should be out by the end of the day. And I think shorts are coming back because yesterday we had 40 point premium. Today that premium is down to 10 points. So obviously there is heavy selling at higher levels. Plus you had institutions also on the short side. So they are uh, mm. possibly mm. pressing on the gas as well. Okay, well, uh, we'll keep an eye out for now. Uh, the market's still down quite a bit, actually. Sensex now down almost, advancing to almost a 350-point cut, turning out to be a very weak day. Mitesh Tucker also joins in. Mitesh, hi, afternoon. Uh, what are you recommending to do now in this volatile phase? Yeah, so I think, you know, very clearly, the uh, upside momentum in both the indices uh, has at least been uh, halted. I think Nifty breaking below 10,200, 220, which was a tough level for it to negotiate and, you know, coming below that means that at least the, the rallies come to a halt. Now, if we start bringing below 10,100, I think the decline could accelerate. So in that sense, I think, you know, we are trading with slightly mixed buys. But overall, I think the way, as Ashwini highlighted, I think the way this selling has come in and the bigger hourly candles which have formed in the last two hours, I think that suggests that there's a greater chance of 10,100 uh, 10, uh, being taken out on the lower side. And once that happens, I think you can possibly look for a retest of the earlier lows. So for the timing, I have two calls, one buy and one sell. M&M is a buy with a stop at uh, 742 for targets of 785, while Godrej Industries, that's a sell with a stop at 547 for targets of 520. Okay, fair enough. That's on the market technicals. Let's invite uh, SPTulsan of SPTulsan.com and Sudhi Bandupadhyay of India Trade in this discussion. Uh, good afternoon. Ms. Tulsan, thoughts first on Tata Motors. Uh, uh, after a long time, we got some good news on the GLR front and the markets reacted to that. Even in a weak market, that stock is holding in the green. Uh, do you get a sense that uh, the, the risk reward now is in favor of buying Tata Motors? See, if you have a positive news on JLR because 90% of the of the revenue contributes by from, from that segment, obviously that is seen to be very positive. And in fact, we have been seeing disappointment on that happening maybe for last two or three months, which has made the share to correct to its all-time low or maybe 52-week low. But apart from that, if you see the domestic performance also, that has been really great. And in fact, domestic performance has been a big dampener on the on the financial performance of the company as well, thanks to commercial vehicle uh, sales, you know, which they have posted a growth of about 37% in the month of March. And that is phenomenal. And in fact, if you take the Q4 domestic sales numbers, as I said, that domestic is contributing just 10%, which is not very much. 
but you have to give credence to these kind of performance and these kind of sales which we have seen for Q4 and if you have any kind of reduction in the losses from your domestic operations and obviously the JLR continuing the way it has it has shown the sales for sales numbers for March are really quite phenomenal and in fact when the stock is ruling at its virtual all time low and if you get these kind of numbers then obviously it, it, it helps to a stock to a great extent on a sustainable basis so I think that Maybe the upside which we have been seeing in the stock for the last about couple of days or three, four days probably is going to stay there and maybe a level of about 380, 385 or 375 to 385 is not ruled out for the, for, for the, for the share stock. Okay, 375 to 385. It's had a really rough last few months. Today's move actually pales in comparison to the fall that Tata Motors has seen over the last 12 months or so. Ms. Sulti, in afternoon, I wanted to ask you about Vmart Retail because, you know, this stock has been hitting new highs. Today, it's up 10%. It's already crossed the 2100 mark. Um, do you think the catch-up with Dmart or with, uh, sorry, with Avenue Supermarts is done or do you think that there could be more to go uh, for the up, uh, on, on this stock now? See, if you take a call purely from fundamentals, I don't think that you will get convinced with the with, with this kind of valuation. And in fact, I remember when the company went public, I said that this is a classic case for the management school to take a call that why they are going IPO at a price of 300 when they deserve a price of 600, 750. But I think the foundation was laid. The promoter is very smart and he knows that the major portion of that he's holding about 80 to 83 percent stake. And that has, you know, given him a space in the in the billionaire list also. And uh, if you if you have a sustainable, we talk of the fraudulent practices of you know pulling up the share price of the weak companies. But if you have the fundamentals at your place, and if you and, and take the case at 10% dilution, which has happened, every investor, those who have been holding, in fact, if if they've exited, they are regretting. In fact, I've said that you should never sell this stock, mm -hmm. though the fundamentals doesn't justify. But these kind of valuations will keep improving. When you don't have to sell the shares, promoters are known that they won't be selling the share. Even the 8% stake, which is diluted, has been, has gone to the either ESOPs or maybe amongst the friends as a gift and you know kind of things. So in fact, there are no virtually there are no sellers, and maybe people talk that every every. I'm not saying that that is that is that is mean, mean, meaningful. Maybe at 31st December, 31st March, if you really want to show your wealth, you know, going up, why not to take the advantage? And these kind of things will keep working here in case of DMART. I'm not trying to say that that's a logical way of taking a call on a stock. But apart from that, in fact, since the company went public, I've been saying that this will always be having the rich valuations. But yes, if I want to draw some solace or maybe some hint from these kind of valuations, then one can always take a call on the few comparative stocks like maybe Reliance Retail, you know, which ultimately has to get reflected into the embedded value of Reliance Industries or maybe future retail. I'm not taking a call on future consumer or maybe other other future stocks, but future retail is a comparable story. Sure. And maybe, you know, that can, that can also see to be beneficiary of this kind of run-up share seen in the share price of DMART. So DMART will have its own own meth, uh, what you call parameters of moving up, uh, which which may not get uh, what you call substantiated or supported by the fundamentals. Okay. By the way, fresh low for the market now intraday. Just see the intraday chart of the the Nifty and also the Bank Nifty now down about 374 points. Uh, uh, Ashwini, so uh, you know from a trading point of view, uh, ahead of the you know, overnight move in the Dow. Tomorrow we have weekly options expiry and also policy as well. We, you know, we, we are heading into that. So, uh, I mean, how do you how do you approach uh, positional trade from here on? See, positionally, if you are short from like 130, there's no uh, point in giving up these positions because now things are getting to a point where they can't be solved very easily if they were negotiating obviously negotiations have failed so that way even on our market's own structure the resumption of the downtrend has happened mm -hmm. i don't think rbi doing nothing will really uh, matter to this market so uh, hold on to short positions the market is back into trending you could have you could say that we were in a sideways to up market now today it's now strongly trending lower and that makes life easier for a trader because the moment you get any sort of gap up, you sell and you'll find lower prices.
Okay, Sudeep Bandapadhyay of Indie Trade Capital also joins in. Sudeep, hi, afternoon. There's a new weapon of mass destruction, right? Donald Trump's tweets and that really has its impact uh, every minute on the markets. You think uh, our market, uh, the, the gains that we saw uh, are going to be short-lived and we're going to resume the downtrend now in the days to come? Well, Sonia, unfortunately, looks like that. Uh, you know, this is what uh, was being kind of feared by the global markets that China will start retaliating. Uh, and that's exactly what has happened. Uh, you know, they have come out and uh, announced this measure, which actually, if you analyze, will hurt uh, Donald Trump where it hits the most. Uh, his uh, core constituency will actually get significantly impacted if China goes ahead with this imposition of tariff. And probably Donald Trump will have no other option but to retaliate with even further measures. So, you know, this has an unfortunate, uh, uh, you know, smell of getting into a full-blown uh, trade war, which doesn't help anybody. Global markets, of course, will be worried, and they are rightly worried. I think markets around the world are kind of coming down, and Indian markets are taking cues from there. You, you guys are absolutely right. One doesn't know how Donald Trump will react. It's quite unpredictable, uh, but I think uh, you know the, the, the way it's, things are unfolding doesn't look good. One has to be cautious. One has to be cautious about companies which have exposure in U.S. and which are exporting, because somewhere or the other, I think the companies which are having uh, significant exports mm -hmm. will start hurting. Okay, well, let's do one thing. Let's take a break. What's interesting is that in a market like this, uh, the top gainers are all ADAG names. Just pull out the internet chart of Reliance Power. Just look at that. I mean, <laughs> phenomenal move. And most of that move has happened in the last hour of trade. Just look at that move on Reliance Power. Stunning move, 14%, 15% higher. In a market which is down about uh, 113 points on the Nifty, 370 points on the Bank Nifty, 340 points on the Sensex. Yeah. Here's a Reliance Power. <laughs> That up has a mind of its own, <laughs> right? Has a mind of its own, <laughs> up 14 Reliance Naval as well, up about 8 percent. But power is the one which is really taking your breath away. In fact, all power stocks have done well today, but uh, Reliance Power is just phenomenal. Anyway, we'll take a break on the other side. Uh, we'll continue our conversation with our guests and also our alpha manager for the day, Gautam Sina Roy from Motilal Oswal Mutual Fund, will be with us. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we are still tracking the last one hour of trade. It's not been a good hour for the bulls at all. But there are plenty of stocks in the broader markets that have been moving quite well. The last few days, we've seen these NBFCs, home finance companies do very well. Today, Repco Home Finance has made a big move. That stock is up almost about 5.5%. And big volumes getting traded there. One of the few pockets that have looked good uh, lately. Uh, Sandeep Bagle joins in to give us his views on individual stocks. Hi, Sandeep. Afternoon. Uh, what are you looking to buy or sell now in the last one hour? Afternoon, Sonia. I would go with a sell in a PC dweller, stop loss of 307, target of 291, and a Sendalco, stop loss 206, target 195. Okay, okay. Sandeep, thanks a lot for those trading ideas. Uh, by the way, that, that move that we were seeing on Reliance Power, uh, now Anisha is telling us that there was, of course, this money control story as well, uh, quoting the power secretary saying that UMPPs are not history to get assured co-linkage uh, I mean, and I'm not sure that uh, th that's entirely the reason because other ADG stocks have also done well but uh, Mr. Tulsen you reckon this would be an exit opportunity the 12% rally that you're seeing in Reliance Power or uh, you think uh, it's, uh, it's worth a punt? I think this should be used as an exit opportunity in both Reliance Neville and Reliance Power in fact maybe earlier you know on a lighter note I've said that share to do it time pe bhatta hai to turn around ho ya stake sale ho I don't think that the, if, if the stake sale happens, that is just a hypothetical thing. I'm saying if there is a change of promoters in Reliance Neville and Reliance Power, both are seen extremely pricey assets, but not with the under the present uh, promoter. And I don't think that you can have the prospects or the hopes of the turnaround for Reliance Neville and Reliance Power. So better to exit in this uh, in this rally if you're holding the stock. Okay, better to exit in this rally. Anyway, uh, these ADAG group stocks, we know the kind of wealth they have deteriorated and deteriorated in the past, right? Uh, this time is no different. But Sudeep, uh, there is a, a 
uh, a flocking of uh, you know investor moves to safe haven stocks we're seeing a lot of the domestic stocks resume their buying interest Aisha Motors is one of them uh, one of the top nifty gainers today uh, do you like this space the domestic growth story and would you would you put incremental money uh, to work in names like say Maruti Aisha etc well I think uh, you know this is definitely a, a great place to be in uh, you know, they have demonstrated performance, which is beyond uh, doubt. Uh, but I'll be a little cautious, Sonia, predominantly because of the fact that they, uh, they, they are at already at elevated price levels. Mm -hmm. These stocks, even today, are not cheap. Uh, we have uh, the beginning of probably a global trade war. Uh, Maruti has significant exports. Eshar has got uh, a lot of uh, global exposure the, uh, to the uh, global markets. So I'll be a little cautious. I will rather uh, go on pure play uh, domestic stories, uh, uh, companies which are focused on the domestic markets. Uh, so, uh, you know, Ultratech Cement today looks good. Assuming they go ahead and get uh, the, 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 the stressed asset they are bidding for, uh, Binani, uh, I think it should be extremely good for Ultratech Cement. They have demonstrated their capability or, uh, or, or the competence of turning around uh, assets which they take over. Uh, JP uh, Cement uh, uh, unit is a case in point. So I think Ultratech is a good buy. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, completely domestic focused uh, FMCG companies like ITC, which today is quoting at a discount to other large FMCG majors like Hindustan Lever, definitely is a good buy. ITC's FMCG business is nearing turnaround. Uh, they will start making money soon. Uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the dreaded duty or incremental duty uh, through GST on tobacco hasn't come. So I think things look good for ITC. So uh, uh, these kind of domestic stories should be looked at. Okay, things look good for IDC, so domestic stories can be looked at. A uh, uh, couple of other stocks, uh, uh, it, I mean, we, we are seeing uh, some kind of move. Uh, Bosch, of course, has been interesting today, uh, so that stock is up about close to 2%. Uh, uh, Dalmia Bharat is up. Uh, IGL and MGL have made a bit of a move in today's trade, so uh, these are a couple of other stocks where we have seen a bit of trading action. Uh, uh, well, Mr. Tulsan, Adani Enterprises, uh, how to how to approach this stock now? Uh, there would be adjustment, of course, uh, tomorrow, I think. Uh, uh, there's record date as well. So, uh, how, how to approach a stock like Adani now? See, tomorrow it is going X, uh, this spin-off, you know, the adjustments which we have been seeing. And, it, and in fact, if you take a call on each vertical, I think the company seem to be quite good. And we have been, in fact, keeping the positive view on the stock. So, maybe... Let's wait for the for the for the spin-off to happen tomorrow because the only problem that the new shares you know which the investors will be getting tomorrow and you know the so, sorry the, uh, after this uh, this record date which is fixed for day after tomorrow then these shares will not get traded for a very long time maybe for about 45 days to one month and that's the only problem so I was expecting the the some kind of selling to come in today or maybe you know remaining in 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 a, in, a, in a range a narrow range and that is what is happening. In fact, I was expecting a mild weakness, you know, to be seen, but that has not come. But otherwise, if you have a patience, then, you know, hold, uh, remain invested. Otherwise, the better strategy that get out today, look for the adjustments, you know, to happen tomorrow and then wait to, to buy the stocks again after the spin-off or maybe the uh, hiving of the uh, hiving of adjustments in taking place. Okay, well, uh, there's no relief really in the market and that's because the Dow futures is still indicating a cut of more than 400 points. Looks like it's going to get ugly, right? I mean, even if it uh, doesn't sell off as much, our market, uh, the, the fact that we've seen no recovery towards the end of trade is concerning. You know, uh, the, there is there is problem in this market and there's uh, aggressive FI selling as well, uh, Sonia. Uh, uh, the futures position, uh, now, you know, all this market needs is uh, just one bit of positive trigger and you know you'll have a massive short covering bounce the problem for the bulls is you know you don't know when that would happen yeah. whether you know the market before that makes a new low uh, 9954 now is the low normally you know markets make double bottoms you know you make a bottom then you have a rally then you go towards that low just to test whether you know that is a big support or not for the market mm -hmm. and then perhaps you have you know resumption of the trend uh, but uh, uh, you know, right now you don't know what Donald yeah. Trump is going to do, right? <laughs> I mean, Dow, uh, you know, it, it's scary to see Dow futures down 450 points. Though, having said that, we have broken that one-to-one -one correlation. Yeah. You know, for example, uh, on days, th there were days when the, the Dow was down 500 points and we have rallied. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, overnight at least, the Dow was up 400 points and we didn't rally at all today. So, that one-to-one -one correlation has sort of broken. 
but uh, for whatever it's worth, uh, it's it's down 1.5 percent. So you don't want to take any aggressive position. Mm -hmm. at this point Clearly, I mean you don't know what Donald Trump yeah. can do. You know, someone put out a very uh, a funny tweet. They said, "What if uh, Jeff Bezos goes out and buys yeah, Twitter and, and, shuts, and shuts down, down Donald, Donald Trump's, Trump's account?" Tweet. Yeah, uh, I think that will uh, solve all the problems, right? Yes, uh, <laughs> it was a uh, it was uh, Preet Bharara who had uh, yes, tweeted it. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, the the former Attorney General of the U.S. who was sacked by Donald Trump, yes. uh, right? The person who had actually jailed some of these. Uh, uh, people uh, in the financial fraud. Uh, yeah. So, uh, person of Indian origin, of course. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, before we, you know, take a break, uh, uh, now down about uh, 384 points on the bank Nifty and about 120 on the Nifty. Uh, Ashwini, what's the critical level to watch out for? Next bit of support? See, you may find that uh, we have restarted the one-on-one -on -one correlation because when you are having a pullback, Sometimes it seems as if the correlation is broken, but my sense is that uh, the downtrend has resumed. About that double bottom, my take on that is often the second bottom is made in a very mild manner. You don't dart towards the bottom. So mm -hmm. that being said, I think the environment is not conducive for any rally anywhere in the world. And even if uh, there are no further salvos, uh, you know, just this environment of uncertainty will take markets lower. So that way, uh, I think people should carry sh uh, shorts home. Even if you do get, uh, you know, mild uh, bounce back, uh, I think that will get sold into. Once 10,100 is also taken out, then there's a clear range breakout and you've traveled from the top of the range to the bottom in one bar. So that's, you know, a fairly strong statement. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, uh, this BTST is concerned, I think BOB is a sell with a stop of 144, target of 132. Mine tree is a sell with a stop of 790, target of 755. Mm. Uh, PVR is a buy with a stop of 1250, target of 1285. And I have a feeling that metals will be taken to the cleaners, so they're likely to lose 15 to 20% of their, you know, current gains. Okay, well, it is getting uh, uglier, actually. We've just given up on that 33,000 level on the Sensex, so that's just gone. And on the Nifty as well, uh, it's getting worse, so almost 130 points gone now. Uh, Mr. Dulcian, thanks so much for joining us and giving us your inputs. We welcome our next guest on the show, Gautam Sina Roy, fund manager at Motilal Oswal Mutual Fund joins in. Gautam, hi, afternoon. I'm sure you guys at Motilal Oswal are not too concerned about, you know, what's happening globally because most of the stocks that you own in your funds are the domestic growth story oriented companies yeah. so be it a Maruti a Britannia Aisha Motors etc do you think that's the way to position yourself this year that better to stick to local stories and perhaps you know put more money to work there absolutely basically quality names and market leaders in their respective domains with very strong earnings growth is what should work through the course of this year thankfully valuations if you see Sonia for this many of these stocks are also quite reasonable now compared to what they were let's say six seven months back and I'm just talking about trailing P. So I think from a earnings growth perspective, we are well set to deliver 20% earnings growth at the portfolio level, just sticking to quality names, many of them domestic oriented. So even in pharma, which is classically an international, uh, you know, uh, global business for Indian pharma, today we are much more positioned, much more optimistic on the domestic pharma story. So. Uh, Staying uh, uh, clear of the trade war victims, let's say, staying clear of uh, companies who are exposed to global trade wars or macroeconomic risk will be an important thing to do because the volatility will hit those sectors much more and we're already seeing that happening. And uh, thankfully, you know, many of these companies had gone through a up move last year, so they have some room to go, in fact, in terms of uh, losing on the share price. But uh, sticking to quality should help because earnings growth is much more secular, much more uh, domestic oriented and also valuations are much more reasonable. So we are going into FY19 with a very clear mind and we are very, very sanguine about the portfolio earnings delivery and hence the price performance too hopefully follows. Oh yes, uh, Gautam, hi, good afternoon. A uh, you know, lot of your stocks, you know, uh, are making a big comeback after a sharp correction. Uh, I mean, Aisha Motors is a case in point. Uh, Interglobe, I think, is a uh, real case in point. Uh, do you get a sense that uh, that correction that we had on Interglobe uh, is well and truly over? I mean, it's already at life high high now, uh, but uh, you know, 
would you look to accumulate more uh, of uh, some of these stocks? You know, the, that's a very pertinent point that you raise, Anuj, because, you know, if you look at many of these domestic-oriented stocks, they are benefiting a, a lot more from the consumption boom that this country is going through. In fact, even our retail financial, uh, uh, retail banks, retail insurance companies, they are also a play on uh, increasing, uh, you know, consumption power or discretionary consumption power of the Indian consumer. And that is a very secular story. The roots of that is essentially increasing per capita GDP, which is a much more structural thing, right? And that's not going to disappear overnight. So I believe that owning such stocks where the secular industry growth is already, let's say, mid to high teens, uh, and then the companies are such that they're gaining market share and they have operating or financial uh, leverage benefits, which is giving them higher earnings growth. So 20% north of earnings growth with very reasonable valuations is a great strategy to be in today. Not only does it save you from the macroeconomic concerns, it also, you know, as a from a pure uh, alpha delivery, pure absolute return perspective also, that's a very good thing to do today. Okay, well the Sensex is now down almost 400 points and the Nifty is advancing towards a 150 point cut. Not looking good at all. Gautam, stay on. We need to take a short commercial break but we'll be back in no time and we'll get you some buy today, sell tomorrow calls from our technical experts.